But as all men must, on 6th of January, 1929, Tex Rickard dies. And it is fitting that the thousands who came to pay their last respects must come to Madison Square Garden. And as Rickard leaves the arena for the last time, those whom he helped to fame and fortune, and who helped make him rich, stand sadly by. The man from Missouri is no more, but what fond memories of him there must be in the mind of the morning Manasseh Muller from that July in Toledo 10 years ago to this January day in 1929. Because for boxing and for Tex Rickard, it was a glorious road to riches. June 1919, President Woodrow Wilson is Albert's guest at celebration in Belgium. Wilson sees some of the soldiers who battled and beat the Kaiser for their soldier king. Then Albert sees America. It's still 1919, and New York pays tribute to royal hero with Manhattan's Mayor Highland heading Father Knickerbocker's festival. After a city hall reception, there's tree planting ceremony in Central Park with Queen Elizabeth and even Crown Prince Leopold aiding the famous and heroic ruler. Patron of the arts, student of science, King Albert received well-deserved honorary degree from hands of Nicholas Murray Butler at Columbia. And then across nation, Los Angeles is city of flowers as it honors Belgium's hero king. In First World War, no leader was more heroic than Albert of Belgium. Odds against him, power against him, with not one jot of help from his later allies, he led Belgian troops in holding war against mighty legions of invading Huns. His visit ends at Hampton Roads, Virginia, and with son Leopold and with his queen, King Albert goes aboard the Truxton at start of his royal journey home. Here's toast to hard-won victory and endless peace. Queen Elizabeth chats with an Italian admiral, and then troop ship George Washington takes them home. In Paris in the long ago, or not so long ago, if you remember a hairdo such as this, young model shows latest in fan creations. Should she be shy this evening behind this hand-painted flutterer, or would she have more allure peeking over this fence of egret feathers? Hmm, nothing too out of date about this needlepoint bag, but it is small. Has she given up on what fan will please her fans? Oh no, here's the one that'll do it. On the beach at Palm Beach in the teens. Suits with skirts and long hose are the fashion for proper bathing. Beauty on the beach didn't show much beauty, and the clothes she wore pretty nearly covered the beach. Since these are bathing ensembles, just imagine what Sally wore on more formal occasions. Well, the ocean looks good on her anyway. Fighting in France halted eight months ago. So Britain's John Alcock and Arthur Brown will take this converted army bomber on peaceful and historic flight across the North Atlantic. The success of Alcock Brown inspires flights in other giant planes. Near Milwaukee, Wisconsin, big Pullman of the Air is christened for her maiden voyage, and one more one-time bomber roars into peacetime skies. Airplanes and pilots are still pretty much freaks and novelties in years just after the armistice. Here in Houston, Texas, big crowd of curious is attracted by Air Force veterans and pioneering airmen on national barnstorming tour. On a plane like those which saw service in World War I and sold by government as army surplus, daredevils grill gaping populations with stunting in the sky. But the plane, too, excites American youth. Across the Atlantic, Europe's most enterprising airmen launch some semblance of air travel between London and Paris. In open cockpits, 
passengers are lifted from ordinary open fields and flown across the channel in flimsy and slow-moving craft. But it's one of man's first attempts to put a device of playboys and daredevils to commercial use. The flying machine is suddenly a long way from Kitty Hawk. Cockpits are covered for comfort of passengers, but still most commercial planes are small. Then, planes designed to carry bigger loads cut costs per trip. It's 1921, and passenger list is now longer than list of crew. Then, planes still bigger carry not only passengers, but their baggage too, as flying becomes more practical every day. Now May 2nd, 1923, and in San Diego, this giant booker is being heavily fueled for Lieutenants John McCready and Oakley Kelly at start of history-making transcontinental flight. Next day, they finish flight to New York non-stop. But greatest single contribution to advance and popularity of aviation is made in May of 1927 by 25-year-old Charles A. Lindbergh and his Paris Hop. To every youngster in the world, Lindy is the hero of heroes. And playing pilot outmodes playing war or cowboys and Indians. Here are airmen of the future. And here's thrill-packed finish of 1927's second most important flight. It's June 7th, and Clarence Chamberlain, with backer Charles Levine, has reached Berlin after a journey of nearly 4,000 miles. Chamberlain's flight was longest on record for years. Levine was first passenger to fly Atlantic. And in Germany begins the era of Sky Giant. This ship carried eight passengers and crew of three. On Great Lakes in 1929, this giant Dornier is scheduled for service between Detroit and Cleveland, carrying 50 passengers at a time. Bigger still in 1929 is the house-like DOX, equipped with 12 water-cooled Curtis engines with accommodations for 100 passengers. On test flight, DOX once rose from waters near Friedrichshafen with 169 passengers aboard. It leaps oceans and continents with ease and gasoline to spare. And then March 17, 1937, the route of the great China Clipper spreads man's wings across the yet unconquered vastness of the Pacific. After trailblazing flights by Captain Edwin Music and his crews, Sikorsky Clippers make regularly scheduled flights to the Orient. And planes are true luxury liners of the skies. Man's dream of glorious castles in the air come true. And soon both land and sea around the entire globe were covered with a net of airline routes. With distance conquered, time is the next element to be assailed by man's unfluttering wings. With jet propulsion, this Canadian airliner speeds from Montreal to New York in just one hour. And as more and bigger planes fly by power of jets, the age of the propeller and gasoline engine seems doomed. From Kitty Hawk to Lindbergh, from Lindy to jet liners, from jets to rockets, who knows that what the next stop will be the moon or Mars? Moscow monoplane, giant airship land of the Soviets, center, completes 13,000 mile hop to Curtis Field, Valley Stream, Long Island. Final jump from Detroit is finished November 1st, 1929, and crowd of 10,000 goes wild with excitement as Russian crew of four brings giant aircraft to perfect landing on American soil. At time, it's one of longest flights in history. There's wild scramble among onlookers to be first to greet Soviet visitors. And police have ticklish job of keeping crowds back from still whirling propellers of taxiing plane. But nobody's hurt, and when plane comes to stop, far-flying airmen emerge, and after days in the air, one peppy Russian decides to take a walk. <laughs> 